This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight. From that city you see below you there, New York, New York. The city's so nice they uh, named it uh, twice. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you? It's uh, Tuesday. It's another uh, time to go into a week of uh, uh, what is a useless uh, endeavor called the ramble. Uh, and uh, by the way, tonight uh, uh, Jack Bishop will not be doing the intersection. Uh, he had a slight uh, thing that happened to him where he'll let it, he'll probably explain it better than I'm going to right now. But in short, he it was really hot out and he collapsed. So they rushed him to the hospital and kept him overnight to make sure nothing was wrong and nothing was wrong. So they let him out today. But as you know, when you go to the hospital, even if there's nothing wrong with you, you come out exhausted. It's just the way things are. So uh, he will not be doing a program tonight. But in its place will be nothing. We'll just we'll we'll put on empty no no nothing at all. Okay, that way because he can't be replaced. That's all there is to it. Okay, all right. Well, listen. It's time for us to uh, let me see here. How do I do this? Okay, I'm trying to remember how I do it. I'm I'm, I'm uh, getting our our panel together. Well, actually, it isn't our panel. It's uh, it's actually it's Bill. You haven't got your camera on yet. Bill? You don't huh? Well, there you are. There you go. Okay, there we go. Hey, I, I need this like I need a hole in the head. Yeah, I can do that too, you know. <laughs> I mean, all I got to do is I got to get out my green putty, okay, yeah. and I got one in my uh, a hole in my head too, okay? Yeah. There we go. All right. Uh, so we both have holes in our head. Yes. That's the way we, it's fun with green screens, folks. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you know, a lot's been going on. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of getting a bigger green screen, by the way, wider. Why? So that I can uh, move this camera back a little bit if I want to, and have a little more landscape going on up back there. You know, uh, my this room isn't wide enough to handle. Yeah, well, anything. no, it's it's a, it's a it's about another, I guess, foot on either side or something. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I could use that. Well, yeah. just, you know, before we start talking about the events of the day, mm -hmm. I heard a commercial for uh, Dish. So they said that it, it would record 16 shows at once. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm here to tell you it didn't work. <laughs> okay, thank you. They do 16 shows now at once? Yeah. Yeah. That's not hard to do, you know. No. But it's just a matter of programming the, you know, the the uh, recorder. When it comes to those things, uh, can, I uh, guess. Let me ask let, you a question. Do you know 16 programs that are on at the same time that you want to record? No, no. Uh, I, there's actually none that I like to record. I, I'm kind of old school. And I also, like to... Dish isn't Dish having a lot of pissing matches with a lot of the uh, suppliers of programming, and they like refuse to put the programming on Dish. <laughs> I thought that was Roku. No. But I can tell you, they must be doing it to Dish, too. Because <laughs> that Dish does nothing. Yes. Have you tried eating off of it? Uh, yeah, but the, the food keeps falling off. Actually, when I had Satellite, I had Dish because it was the best one I could get with the view to the sky that I had. Mm -hmm. And I actually put a dish out on my, uh, uh, I had a little, there was a roof to a, a garage, and I put it out there, and I just... It was between two buildings, and it had just the right angle, and I, the, I hit it okay. What? Was that in the marina? Yeah, it was in the marina. Yeah. So I didn't have cable. I had uh, the, uh, uh, the, satellite. the satellite. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, but, uh, it seems as though you can lose your Emmy. You can lose, yes. Uh, 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 Mario, uh, Andrew Cuomo. Right. Uh, had his Emmy taken away, which I think 
the Grammy people are assholes for doing. You know, I mean, come on, you gave it to him for something you thought that he did that in and of itself you can't take away from him, okay? Which was the way he handled the COVID crisis with the TV stuff. It, it, it was based on those TV speeches he made, which were very good, you know? I mean, you may not like him, but he was very effective, all right? And so they gave it to him for that. So has any of that changed? No. Of and course. on top of that, nothing's ever been proven that he did any of those things. So why take it away from him without the proof? You know, well, you stand up for him uh, without without question. But uh, no, I don't stand up I, for him without question. Let me put yeah. your name up here. That would be nice. See. Hey, yeah. I heard that Ooh. Larry Elder. Is, is according to the New York Times is being told uh, they're saying that he's a white supremacist, and uh, you know that's that's a tough uh, that's a tough one. Well, I I don't you know, look he's he he's not you don't want him as governor, okay? I mean he doesn't have any cred at all, okay? There are probably some people out there who at least have been in public service in one way or another. He hasn't. He's just been a fucking TV, a radio show announcer. Okay? That's well, all he is. He's got his spiel down. Huh? He's got his spiel down. No, he's got, you know, no but, but that's his TV, it's his radio spiel. That's what it's all about. What did Reagan have when he was governor? You know, I mean, he well, was... Well, Reagan, Reagan had a lot of speech making that he did over the years and a lot of political... Uh, 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 he, he was involved in politics, okay? Uh, 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 Elder's only... All he's done is a, is a radio show. And what, how does that qualify him to be governor? I mean, how does he qualify him to get your vote, which he got? He got my vote. Yeah. Uh, he got my vote because... Uh, of the uh, things that he said he supported, mm -hmm. which is Second Amendment, which is... Um, uh, you, know, you know, look, okay, I'll run for governor and say I'm for the Second Amendment. Is that all it takes for you to vote for a guy? Sort of. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> You're throwing your vote away. Uh, also, he's going to clean up the homeless situation, which suppose, is... Suppose somebody said all of that. Well, listen, who doesn't want to clean up the homeless situation? Even the mayor of San Francisco is trying to clear it up. Nobody likes that. Nobody likes to see people homeless. No, there's too much uh, money being earned through uh, subsidizing the homeless. Not not only, you know, there every homeless person in San Francisco, I believe, costs around $70,000 to the, to the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's happening is... That's uh, just they're picking up fecal matter. Yeah, well, yeah, there's yeah. businesses... Uh, that make their living by delving out these services, whether it's getting them hotels or food or food stand. You know, th there are so many things that they do. Listen, listen uh, no matter what the problem is, listen, in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, do you know where most of the money went? Those trillions of dollars? Uh Probably all the Black Hawk helicopters it, it, that they left. Uh, what, what, no, what we're talking about is the um, uh, the the con uh, the contractors over there. Yeah, feeding people. And and, and they did they down. didn't do anything with the money. They just took it and they didn't do anything with it. And we're not going after them, and we should be going after them. Well, you know, you know there's got to be accountability. But uh, but, but you, you see, for for for, for 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 elder to say these things. It's no big whoop, you know, to say I'm a, I'm I'm I want to solve the homeless problem. Who doesn't? You uh, know? I I'm saying is that the the administration. Well, what makes you think he can do it better than anybody else? He can't. But okay, he, well that's my, that's the answer. What so. he can do is he can squeeze off uh, the money that's going to these uh, groups that yeah. are mm -hmm. making millions by keeping people homeless. Well, see, but that's it. That, you're, you're going the off on another subject altogether. Begin with Larry Elder is not going to be do, able to do anything about that. Well, Nothing it, about it. It's the same thing. Look at it. It's the same thing as drugs. They they don't want to cure diabetes. They, well, it's easily curable. They doesn't believe in equal rights for women. Uh, that's not true. No, he doesn't. He said so. He said so. 
And you're worried about equal rights for women, but you don't say anything about what's going on in Afghanistan. Wait right a minute. Now. now you're changing the whole subject. I am not. You no, know, you're, you're changing just... the whole subject. No, no Phil, Phil, we're, we're talking about the homeless in San Francisco okay. or about women being able to get equal opportunities or whatever. And well, all of a sudden I... you change it because you haven't got an answer to that. You change it to a heard... look at what's going on in Afghanistan. You, you grab that one out of your ass. I never heard that. Well, I, I read it just yesterday. Oh, yeah. And you probably read that, you know, he threatened that woman with a with a gun. Yep, yep he did. He did. I, well, he, 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 I, I, I got my blue gun right here. You see this one? It's well, phony. Yeah, it's, I know. That's why it's blue. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it's blue. <laughs> Aren't they were supposed to be red? Uh, uh, some of them have a red tip, but oh, okay. uh, and some of them are, are why red. Why do you, why why can I ask you? This is just you know, just a, uh, not being a nasty question. It's just a question. Why do you have a blue fake gun? Oh, uh, Larry Elder's girlfriend's coming over. Oh, I but, see. Okay, and you're, uh, no, I, the reason I have the blue fake gun is I do. Um, uh, you could do gun takeaways. You can. You can demonstrate. Oh, I see. It's uh, for demonstration certain, purposes. Yeah, you demonstrate okay. certain things through uh, your training. And uh, another thing that I do, and I don't want to do it with one of my good ones, is I put a uh, uh, a solo cup. It's a red solo cup. I have a magnet. I put it against my safe at at the height that I draw my gun out and uh, and and acquire my sights. So I draw into that cup. Uh, several times mm -hmm. practicing having my draw come out to the same point. Like my collar, so my collar's all screwed up tonight. I need, I need, I need, I, begin, using, I better watch not, this. No, what? You're not using the right detergent. I know it's, uh, I see those ads on TV with the guy on a date and his things yeah. like this, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so now every time I go on the air, I go, is my, is my collar getting kind of skeezy here? Yeah. Maybe you lost some weight. Uh, no. Uh, no. no? no. Uh, I tell you what's happening to me. Next, uh, This Saturday morning, mm -hmm. uh, I have something to do in the afternoon, but Saturday morning when I go to the gym, they're bringing a dunk tank there in a trailer. And I get into that thing, and it's going to tell me how much fat and how much muscle I have because I'm starting the nutrition part of my uh, program uh, where uh, – you know, I'm supposed to just eat six meals a day, these small meals with so much fat, so much uh, carbohydrates and so much protein. But uh, the the gym that I go into, I, I love this place. You know, I show up at you'll, five. Minutes. You'll love it. You'll love it for about another five weeks and then we won't hear about it again. Well, it's an eight week challenge. How many that, times have you gone through something like this in your life, Phil? Well, uh, several. Matter of several, fact, several. How many? Jan Hutchins and I uh, used to talk every Saturday morning, and uh, he was trying to get me to go to the gym. Now, the gym that I used to belong to is was across the street from my apartment, just across the street. I walk out, I turn oh, right. Oh, 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 I see. This is why you love this place. Yeah, it, it, well, no, it, it, I, I'm not going to that gym anymore. But he said, Phil, he says, you got to exercise. So he said, I, I said, well, I belong to the place. I, I, I write the check. You know, uh, and then they started deducting it automatically, so I, I got yeah. less exercise. Right. With check you didn't have to write a check. Yeah. Right. He said to me, "Just go over the threshold." He just wanted me to 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 walk in the door. I didn't have to walk in all the way; just get over the threshold. That mm -hmm. would be the the first step. Uh, I, I went over the threshold, but I I never went in. Other than you to, never you never went in. Uh, I, Occasionally, but uh, occasionally. Well, yeah. Anyway. So uh, this this new gym uh, is mm -hmm. it's really pushing me to my limits. I mean, it pushes you to you, you're gasping for air, and uh, I feel so much stronger. I think I've lost size, uh, but I haven't lost weight. Well, that's okay. Just it's healthy for you. Yeah, I've given up all exercise. I'm not even I'm not even walking anymore. I'm just yeah. hey. Uh, you know, other guys your age, I guess the Rolling Stones drummer, Charlie Waits. Uh, Charlie has, Watts. Watts, Waits. Watts. Watts, Watts, Watts. Watts. No, Charlie Watts died, yeah. 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 80. Uh, 
Jesus. What, yeah. what did he have? He, I don't know what he had, but he had an operation about two weeks ago. Yeah. And then he died from complications from that operation, whatever the operation was. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, similar to uh, uh, Joan Rivers. No, 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 no. Joan Rivers was a complete fluke. That was a complete, that was just people not paying attention, you know. Uh, I mean, she was going in for something very simple. She was going in to, I think, get some nodes removed from her vocal cords. It was a very common operation. You know, my friend Bobby Slayton has had it. Uh, almost ruined his career because his voice cleared up, but then uh, his voice got bad again, and it's, he's back again. But anyway, as usual, the point is, that uh, she went in and they, they just did a few things wrong and she died. Uh, it, that wasn't, uh, it, was, it was actually the complication from the operation they were doing at the moment. Yeah. No, the, he died, Watts died a couple of weeks after the operation and they're yeah. trying to figure uh, out uh, what, uh, you know, what, what the story they is. Uh, they haven't said. So uh, now, now that we've talked about Charlie, what, what, uh, what, what's your take on Afghanistan? Uh, you know, I'm I, I'm sure that you're comfortable with Biden's uh, position, but do you really believe that? I, I I don't know that I'm I'm happy with his position. On the other hand, I think that people like yourself would complain no matter what he did. Okay, uh, 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 you know, you're never going to say, hey, you know, I'll tell you, Biden did a good job on that deal. You're never going to say that, Phil. So let's no, not let's not even go there. Okay. Doesn't matter what I say. Here, you know, here, never, now, here's what I here's what I think. I think Biden has not handled this well. I think he was handed a shit show, and I think he probably should have just said, "Well, fuck what Trump did," because he pretty much thinks that anyway. Uh, I'm not going to abide by getting out at the end of May, and we'll. Uh, Will to a different kind of withdrawal. I mean, the way you do a withdrawal is you don't move the troops in to move the people out. You keep the troops there to move the people out, and then every after everybody's gone, then you move the troops out. The troops right. are the last ones to move. And I think this whole thing was done ass backwards. But I think he was handed a shit show. Okay. There was one other problem. Uh, I don't think he's getting his intel properly because you know uh, a few weeks ago. The Taliban had taken 10 percent of the country, mm -hmm. then 20, then 30, then 40, then 70. And then they're marching into uh, uh, Kabul. Kabul. Yeah. Uh, when when I think it saw, only took them like 10 days, didn't it? I, Something like that? When they saw what was happening, how come they didn't mobilize and stop them? Uh, OK, you mobilize to stop them. And what do you do? You start having the troops being back at war with them, and you well, take wait a minute, you take the chance of losing more lives by doing that, and you have to weigh the various consequences of doing something like that. And I think the basic consequence is you are going to lose American lives by doing it that way. Well, right now you have host uh, Americans that are hostages in Kabul. They can't come out of their house. They've been told to shelter in place. We've gotten most of the Americans out of there. The Americans who are still there are people like contractors and so on. We've gotten most of the staff from the, from the State Department out of there. They're already in Germany, okay? Uh, and, and the people we still have left to get out are Afghanis, not... Uh, not uh, 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 you know, Afghanis that are going to lose their life if the uh, once the well, America. It's a very good chance of that. Yes, uh, but you know, then again, they knew that was coming. They should have gotten out before this. Well, you know. Do you think that uh, you know sometimes you can't, and and they were hoping maybe that it, it wouldn't happen. But do, do you think that um, the uh, that these refugees uh, should be brought to the United States? Mm -hmm. I mean these. Yeah, yeah. I heard one today is saying that he's planning on moving to Sacramento. So you better get the welcome wagon out. Who, who's moving to Sacramento? One of these guys on TV, one of the Afghanis who they they had at Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany, or wherever, where whatever Air Force Base they took them to in Germany, was saying, "Yeah, I'm planning on moving to 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 Sacramento." Uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, "How you live in Afghanistan? I mean, do you even know where Sacramento is? You know." Yeah. 
they can have a future in floor covering if they just come to Concord. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd be happy to hire some of them. You know, I would. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You know, I mean, you know, they work with uh, Americans. They were supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, they did their job. Uh, you know, yeah, I'd be happy to hire them. Yeah, but anyway, so it's yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good, all the way around. Uh, I am, uh, I'm, you know, I just think that uh, I just think I just think that uh, to begin with, uh, Trump did a bad job of negotiating this thing. Okay, uh, he just negotiated it with too much of a definite. We're getting out of here. You know, okay. we'll be out. We'll be out of here by the end of May. I understood that this was the deal. Pompeo negotiated one thing, and then uh, they had somebody else negotiating with Taliban. So there was the Taliban, and there was the Afghani government. Right. And what they were trying to do was separately negotiate and then bring them together so there was a sharing of power. But the problem is the Taliban just marched through and uh, didn't regard the uh, the agreements that had been made. Mm -hmm. So, but once they started marching through, I think the only way you're going to get people out, Americans out of uh, Kabul, is by using the Sherman approach. What look, you do? Look, I I don't think that Trump, if he were still president, would be doing any better a job than Biden is. It may be a worse job because he wasn't. He just didn't know how to handle that kind of situation. It would. It's it's it's. Army 101, you don't pull the troops out of the base. You don't give up that base uh, until... The troops are the last to leave. The last to leave. Okay. and then, They're the ones that turn out the lights. Right. And then if you're not going to be turning over that equipment to the Afghan government, then you fly it out of there. Uh, well, but, you didn't know. You didn't know that the, that the Afghans, with your equipment, were going to give up that easy. No, you, you didn't, but you have contingency plans for if they did. And uh, and obviously... Yeah, but you see, wait a minute. It wasn't Jobs Biden to have any of these plans. It was Trump's job. Biden's only been president for the last, what, seven months, something like that. He, he, wasn't, he didn't even create the exit strategy. It doesn't matter whether he created it. He could have changed it. Well, he, he, but he didn't. But he didn't. You he know. didn't. Exit strategy. Yeah, yeah, but you've got to put a lot of blame on Trump for this thing too. You got to put a lot of blame on Trump. It's nope. that it, you know you you got to feel sorry for Biden that he got uh, he got handed this this as I say this shit show. I feel you know. sorry that Biden's incompetent. I feel sorry that Biden is incoherent. And you, you're going to say that Trump wasn't incompetent? No, not at all. Why? For 600,000 600, people dead from COVID, and you don't think he's incompetent? I think the Chinese... Uh, but no, 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 you're changing the subject, Phil. Forget the Chinese. We're talking about the problem occurred here, and he didn't do anything about it. You're, you're talking about 600,000 dead, and it's because we were attacked by China. No, we weren't. Phil, don't be ridiculous. Not ridiculous. You sound, like, you sound like a moron. I'm out. Well, thank you very much. That's what I called one of your listeners or, or uh, callers. No, I don't think you called him a moron. I think yeah, you did. When, I, when, I, when, I called him a moron. Did, I called him. You called him something. Yeah, well, I called him an asshole. I don't care. He doesn't call me any more than you do, so I, you know where my loyalties lie. <laughs> yeah, Any anybody in <laughs> if, if you call me, I'm on your side, okay? Yeah. But uh, You know, yeah, just... Just one, one or two things about that. You know, some people are bullies, and uh, and that's what that's what happened. The guy was a bully, and uh, and I stood up to him. Oh. And and when you stand up to a bully, they usually run, and that's exactly what he did when he hung up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You know. Uh, but anyway, I mean, I just uh, I just think that it's uh, it's kind of you know. Uh, you you can't you can't take the responsibility away from Trump on this one. I mean, you you've got to take uh, other people have to take responsibility too because you had Bush uh, to uh, to uh, Obama to Trump to to Biden and everybody kicked the can down the road, you know. Right. And unfortunately, it was Biden who got caught with it at the point where we said, "Well, we're getting out." Okay, we told them we were getting out. Now you're president here. Take it right. <laughs> 
But if he would have gotten out the way you look, claimed, he wasn't. He didn't handle it right. No, he didn't. No. But if he did, if he did handle it right, and all he had well, to if do, he, if you thought that Trump was always full of crap on everything, then you must feel he was full of crap on this deal, and you should have backed out of it. No, well, the thing or at is, least, or at least said to the Afghanis or to the Taliban, you stay where you are. Otherwise, we're not moving out. Okay. That's right. Once we move out, you can do whatever you want to do. But in the meantime, you just better not even move an inch. Just stay where you are. Exactly. Yeah. And because there was a vacuum created uh, by. But how many more Americans? Do, how many more American men do we want dead? None. Although, how many American, how, how many American men, men and women too? Uh, how many Americans do you think died over there? Uh, two thousand three hundred yeah. and something. It's about twenty five hundred. Now parse that out over twenty years. What does that come to? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, how many over twenty years? How many per year? You didn't lose that many, and yeah. many of them were yeah, under right, Bush. Right. And, uh, and, now, and now, how many Afghanis died in that whole thing? Over fifty six thousand, I think. Yeah, yeah. So you know. I mean, the real people that suffered in all of this, the Afghans. Uh, well, you know, I, I'm uh, involved with a group that builds homes for uh, veterans that have come back from Iraq and Afghanistan that have lost two, uh, three or four of their limbs. Uh, that's that's the, the cutoff point. It, so, wait a minute, the cutoff point is three or four limbs? Two, not, not two, three or If you four. lost two limbs, you don't get a house built for you? Well, I'm going to start an organization that does it for people who lost two limbs well, or less. Plus, the amount of effort that the families have to do to oh, yeah. uh, help these guys is phenomenal. It puts yeah. a lot of stress on them. So these houses are smart houses that, uh, for instance, the cooktop, when they go up with their wheelchair, the cooktop comes down mm. automatically the height the doors open automatically the whole thing is uh is is operated by a um, an ipad and uh these smart houses are are, are great because they give these uh, people that have uh, been wounded and in, in, in uh, at war uh independence you know i still go back to my old theory about it though i i think it's wonderful what you're doing okay let me not diminish that okay but i don't think you should be doing it i think the government should be doing well, the government is. I mean, the doing government it. sent them over there. They put them in the line of fire. They gave a couple of limbs up to the effort. Uh, once they get back here, they should have a free pass. This government should take care of them for the rest of their lives. Well, I think you're right about that. Although, and it's not it, our job when we do when we do it. We are saying to the government, "Well, we'll do it. Don't worry about it." Our government. The government works for us. And it's our government that sent these guys over there, and they they were wounded, mm -hmm. and they need our help. And uh, if you wait for someone else to do it, when will it get done? Mm -hmm. So yeah. the Stephen Siller Tunnel, Tunnel to Tower Foundation not only helps veterans, but it also helps first responders, mm -hmm. uh, first responders that lost their lives uh, in the 9-11 uh, mm -hmm. at, the, at the towers. So, you know, the, what uh, what we do is we pay off mortgages of first responders houses and we build houses smart houses for uh survivors of the war that uh, have been uh critically wounded mm -hmm. and uh it's 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 a good program well, i think it's i think it's terrific what you're doing i still say uh we should what we do is we have a tendency to take the responsibility away from the government who should be doing it there should be yeah, nothing. But, there should be nothing too good for these heroes when they true. come back from that uh, from that war. You know, government. You right. know, if you look at what's going on in Australia right now, uh, the the people are standing up and they're protesting because of the lockdowns. Now, you may agree with lockdowns or disagree with lockdowns, but you agree that people have a right, at least in this country, to protest. When, when they are in disagreement with the, with the uh, government. So what's happened is 20 years ago, they took the guns away from uh, people in Australia. So they can't protect themselves. They went out to protest and the police, uh, as, as well as the, the government, are, are arresting these people, knocking them down. I saw them being, you know, thrown to the ground. Uh, well, I wish we had, uh, I wish we had our, our friend here. 
Uh, oh, maybe you can ask him. I'm sure he'll call eventually. Uh, but you know what's happening there is uh, that the government is is not. You see, in this country, it's the government does is supposed to do what the people want. But I think over there, the government's doing what the government wants and uh, not giving. They, they don't have rights there like we do here, and we're so quick to give up our rights uh, yeah. in this country. Uh, you know, but 20 years later, it came to bite the right. uh, Australians in the ass. Well, anyway, hey, listen, uh, I have nobody waiting here. I have Alan. That's next to nobody. <laughs> well, he's he's about the size of two people. Yeah, he could take. Yeah, we could we could count him as two people. Yeah. Uh, do you want to stick around a little bit? Sure, I'm not going to leave you uh, in a lurch. Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Let me admit him. And let's also get rid of your name under the picture. There we go. There's uh, there's Alan. I'm nobody. It's okay. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Then I'm nobody. It's okay. Yeah, and you won't be able to call uh, uh, the uh, the intersection tonight. Yeah, I heard that earlier. Thank you. Because he uh, he's uh, he he's not under the weather, but he was in the hospital overnight, and uh, that can wear you out. So. Oh yeah, he's taking the night off, which is fine with me. You know, yes, yes. you know, Jeff is no stranger to hospitals. Oh, uh, oh, that's yeah. my favorite place. Yeah, you love hospitals, right? Well, you haven't been in the hospital for a long time, have you? No, I not why you've been calling this show. You know, I've never, no, it's been a long time. I've never had you call and say, "Hey, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in the hospital." You know, but I worry that you are sometimes when I don't hear from yeah. you. You know. No, no, I've, I've been very healthy. Yeah. You know. Good. I was telling somebody that I have, uh, you know, I have an aortic valve. Yeah. But I have two of them. Yep, two of them. Yeah. yeah. They put one in, and they they left one on top. And well, they they put in another one as a spare, just in case you right, needed it. Just in case. I, I was going to say, most people only have one aorta, so how does got that work? It. He got it at Costco. They get two valves, you for, get, the price. You get two valves for the one. price of one. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you saw them on television. Get a valve. And by the way, if you order right now, we'll send you a second one free. Yeah. And again, soon night. Yeah, and again, soon <laughs> night. Ideas for uh, some promo spots that uh, you and Rob could do, uh, you know, like uh, fabulous, uh, you know, the golden oldies, how they have these guys, you know, hits of the 50s, hits of the 60s. Mm -hmm. You could do protest songs of the 60s as, you know, as a, uh, mm -hmm. a, sort of a, a joke. And then, uh, you know, a, a number of, uh, you know, what do they call those things? Um, well, I years ago, I interviewed Ron Popeil. Yeah, uh, and he told me. He says, "You know how I made my made my biggest money?" He said, "Why?" He said, "I would go on and I would say, okay, we're going to give you uh, this uh, this this grill, let's say, okay, but that's not all. If you order right now, you know." And as he went on in the commercial, by the time he was through, there were like twenty things they were going to send you. And he says, that's how I made him sell. Because I sold you the one thing and made you want to buy the one thing. And then I was saying, but I'm going to throw in a set of knives. And I'm going to throw in this uh, curly Q maker. And I'm going to throw in this. I'm going to throw in that. By the time you were through, you're going, hey, all I wanted was a goddamn fryer. But gee, all that other stuff? Sure. I, where do I sign up? Well, I also thought about put you should put together a commercial. You know how uh, some guys sell gold, mm -hmm. well, sell pot metal or zinc, you know, as as an investment. No, plastic as an investment. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Re yeah. Recycle plastic. Yes, Alan. Recycle plastic. Now that we have a couple people here, uh, you know, I, I that, Phil, you're kind of like Trump. You know nothing about the military, right? Yeah, Army 101, I love this statement about our pull out of Afghanistan and how Biden ought to just know this. Um, this, this comes from somebody that hasn't been in the Army, neither you nor I, and Trump wasn't in the Army. So how, how would, uh, uh, Biden was in the military, so he might know better, I don't know. 
on the pullout. It just it seemed like a, a weird. Statement. Well, I, I would disagree to this extent that I was in the Navy, and I don't think I know that much about military protocol. All I know is how when they say march, you march. You know. I was in the army. Huh? You know, Biden might have been in the army, and uh, Trump was in uh, military school. So <laughs> I think he probably had more experience than Biden. Oh, yeah, right. But I don't know that military school is exactly the military. No. It is a, it, it is a military-style training is what it is. My parents threatened to send me to Peekskill Military Academy, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't want to break well, my spirit. You know, we had, we had four schools in Marin County. We had San Rafael High. We had uh, uh, my school, which was uh, uh, what, what was my school? Saint Francis, uh, Sir Francis Drake. Okay. Uh, then we had Redwood High, and uh, we had the um, uh, Catholic uh, Marin Catholic. Okay, but there was one other school that everybody forgot about in Marin. Remember yeah. what it was? The Marin That's Military awesome. Academy. Oh. Mm -hmm. And there. Then it was right next door to the Jewish Community Center. Yeah, oh. I think it may still be there. I don't know. You had a Lucas Valley Road. Uh, no, 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 no. The the Marine Community, the Marine Marine Jewish Community Center used to be right in the middle of San Rafael. Oh, okay. Because now it's next to the uh, uh, I mean, what's it's, the it's, it's it's next to the uh, the big uh, the Marine uh, Community uh, the Marin. Civic Center, Civic Center, which was right. designed by uh, what's his name, right. Frank, Frank Lloyd, Lloyd Wright. So yeah, uh, but uh, but uh, it was right next door to the Jewish Community Center, uh, and and uh, they would the, the kids would they send kids there, you know, and it was the other school, but yeah. nobody ever talked about it much. Yeah, I think I think I think you look a lot better, Phil. To when somebody else is talking, to just nod your head instead of talking. Nobody hears you when you're talking when somebody else is talking. Nobody hears me when somebody else isn't talking either. We don't listen to a thing you have to say <clears throat> anyway. Because your equipment's messed up. Yeah, well, I, I haven't had time to deal with the equipment. Uh, and, you know, I've got <laughs> equipment that's messed up too. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, at least three of us do, right? Yeah, how are you doing, Vernon? You're down there. And... Well, we uh, <clears throat> Kentucky has uh, passed eight thousand new COVID cases as of yesterday. So you're 8, not you're, per you're, day. So you're not going out. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm still going out. I'm fully vaccinated, and when I go out, I wear a mask. Okay. Hey. All right. Uh, now Tennessee got hit with these uh, torrential downpours and, and floods and a lot of damage. Was anything, uh, uh, did anything happen near you? And then Alex, I, I guess, all of you New Yorkers. Well, they always send, I always get these alerts that go off on my watch. You know, yeah. and, and then it says uh, flash floods well, I get that too, are, are, are predicted for Harlem. They don't say New York City, Harlem. Okay. I got news for you. I've lived in Harlem for about nine years now, maybe close to 10 years. I think more than 10, about 10 years now. I have never seen a flood in this neighborhood, let alone a flash flood. Well, yeah. that, that flood that happened in Tennessee was in uh, one particular county. And I think it was, it's kind of a, a little bit mountainous and the creeks in that area feed both the Kentucky River and the Tennessee River and the they got 17 inches of rain like in 24 hours. Did you hear about uh, the, uh, the guy in Tennessee, the uh, talk show host Phil Valentine? Uh, he, uh, he was always he was an anti-vaxxer. He, he was against vaccinations. He died over the weekend. He died of COVID over the weekend. Of COVID. Oh, you, know, you know who's got COVID? Uh, uh, Jesse Jackson. Really? And his wife. And his wife, huh? Okay. Actually... Have they had the vaccination? I don't know. Jesse Jackson? Uh, yeah. He says Charlie's not here. We got statistics for the country if uh, if you want me to play Charlie tonight. Sure, play Charlie Perfect. tonight. The role of Charlie okay. will be played by as, Bernie. As of, wait, 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 as hold of on a yesterday. second. I'll do like they do on the soap operas. Yeah, I'll tonight the wanted... part tonight the tonight the part of Charlie Wallace is gonna be portrayed by Vernon Nunn. 
There we go. Uh, new cases in the United States, 229,831 as of yesterday. How many? 229,831 new cases new yesterday. New cases. How, and how are our deaths doing? 908 yesterday. No. So what's that percentage? Uh, uh, I'd have to get my calculator out. Get up, take my take my socks off. Now, you know? I, I guess most most of this is a is a pandemic among people who haven't been Un, vaccinated. Unvaccinated among the unvaccinated. Yeah. yeah. So the yeah. ones that survive will have some immunity and will add to herd immunity, even if they don't get. Well, the shot. there's a question as to whether they do get immunity. I mean, uh, are they may not a hundred percent. Not a hundred percent. No. It, for a short time they, that's well, why they recommend them going supposedly and supposedly if you had it say uh about six months ago it doesn't make you immune to the delta virus to the delta variant i think the jury's out yeah. well they're they're talking about having a, a after you've after you've had your first vaccination actually your second dose of the first vaccination eight months later they're suggesting that you get a booster yeah yeah well, well but the fda and the cdc haven't signed off on that let's see what happens i think they have actually oh really yes oh. yes because yeah uh, but it's only it's only select people at this point well, uh, well people it, of no, our age no, no here here no here. people who are immuno immuno deficient well, that's well, different that's different than the eighth month thing they because they never got the people that are immune deficient and like aids cancer that type of stuff the, the first two shots never worked right. And so the, they they want them immediately. Doesn't matter how many months afterwards, they want them immediately. The eight month thing is- Well, I don't know this to be true, Alan, and I hate to pass along fal false information to the audience that I haven't verified. Yeah, and I wonder why if they if they have immunity, why why they need, you know, there's no bail now. You know, you can, you do a crime you don't need immunity. It's true. They let him go. I only shot him twice. Well, I mean, uh, uh, accident. It's pretty. Uh, you know, it. it, it what's going to happen is, uh, uh, at eight months, uh, they supposedly everybody's supposed to get the next shot. They say it starts September twenty third. They even put a heard. date it's on it. On yeah. Uh, the, but, but here's the thing. Yeah, again, I, I refer to the, this dumb asshole from some news service who asked the, the CDC when they were holding one of their hearings, uh, or the FDA, one or the other, well, why uh, are you just making it uh, six months? Why don't you say the, the first people to get it are going to be older people over, over, over the age of, say, 70? Yeah. And they had to ref tell this person from the press that's the people who got them first. So at eight oh, yeah. months, they're going to be have them evade. They're going to be the first ones who get the, the the new shot. It is you know it has nothing to do with. Uh, uh, that's the way it was done in them initially, and that's the way it's going to automatically d happen now. This asshole asked that stupid question. From Fox News. Yeah. I don't oh. think it was Fox News. I think it was like MSNBC. Oh, yes, uh, yes, Jeff. Well, from what I understand, that since you've had the first full first one and the second one, mm -hmm. that there, you're supposed to wait, what is it, six months? Well, months? Eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Eight months. Okay. That's what the so-called rules are. My sister went down the other day and got herself injected right away. As for the third. Yeah, really? Right. And they, they just gave it to her. No Where? Problem. Where did they do yep. that? It was, well, it was in Atlanta. You can you get know, it done here. They, I guess you can get it in any drugstore. Did she yeah. that she had the first two shots, or was she pretending that this was no. the She already had the... She's just, she's a nurse also. So, I mean, she knows... She's a healthcare she's smart. provider. She knows her stuff. Yeah. Okay? Uh, so and I said, how could you do that? You're not supposed to do it. Because the, nobody... The reason why we're, we're at eight months and that, you know, is the Israeli studies that were done 
are saying that at eight months, the immunity starts to drop off. It doesn't just at eight months in a day end up being nothing. It just starts dropping. And so what they're trying to do is hit a target somehow. Eight months is where the immunity starts dropping off. And they're trying to hit that so older people, immune compromised, whatever, can go and get another shot in case this gets out of control and they lose total immunity. They want to be ahead of the game. And that's what Israel and a couple other countries have Mm -hmm. done through science. People that are jumping ahead that have only got their second shot after four months, there's pretty good proof from the Israeli study that it doesn't help them. So, would extend uh, what they have, even though it's not helping. Nah, if you read the Israeli study, you know what? I mean, without getting into well, I don't know who makes the Israelis the last authority on this. Well, because they're very smart on medicine. Well, also, have you looked at the statistics lately in Israel? No, what's going on? Oh, COVID's going crazy over there now. Oh. But probably not from the people that are getting the vaccine. Well, it's going it's going crazy. So if they're so good at taking care of this, apparently they're not that good. Well, if we're so good at taking care of it, how come a lot of people are getting sick? Now you're being like Phil. So if it's blah, 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 then this is not true because that you can't say that is, you know. No. The fact it's is. About, it's about data. Huh? It's about data. Yeah. And, and I don't, you know, the fact is, be, be honest about it. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. We don't really don't. Business. We're grasping at straws. We're yeah. going with this eight-month thing because it's better than not having an eight-month thing, you know? I think that the Israelis are getting more COVID right now because of the possible, uh, I, I'm assuming, that a lot of the uh, people in Gaza are not vaccinated and they're able to, you know, so there's there's a lot of uh, uh, Israeli citizens that don't... Um, uh, that didn't get vaccinated. Well, right. I mean, if that's if that's the case, then I think that we should go in there along with the Israelis and everybody else and vaccinate the people in Gaza. Well, but why see, aren't they getting vaccinated? Probably because we're preventing them from getting vaccinated. Uh, that's that's the same kind of thing as uh, you, you can't have this government overreach. That's why the people in Australia. Are, are protesting. That isn't the reason why the people... It, it, yeah. it, 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 listen, it's a bunch of idiot assholes like we have over here. Okay? Lockdown. Uh, you know, they're saying that they don't need the lockdown. Twelve it, people... Uh, these are the people who in Australia would vote for Larry Elder for Prime Minister. Okay? Hey, uh, you know, I also mm-hmm. wanted... I'm here. I wanted to ask Vernon. Uh, now, uh, were you... Did you see the last days of Vietnam? Were you... Were you in Vietnam at that time? Uh, I never, I never was uh, in the regular army. I was in the National Guard, saying I did not get sent there. Oh, well. I was in the Navy at the end of the war. Yeah, maybe the beginning of the war, huh? Or at the beginning of the war? No, I mean I was there at the. Excuse me, I was there at the beginning of the war. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought, I thought Vernon was there, and I was just wondering if there was, if he see no. similar between that and what's going on in Afghanistan. I had a college I had a college deferment getting my engineering degree and then the draft was still in play when I graduated but they had just changed the law right as I graduated from engineering school that said uh, if you get your notice to to report that within a certain amount of time you could go and join the National Guard and that would be sufficient to serve your time. And so you joined the National Guard. So I joined the National Guard, yeah. so I could be a weekend warrior. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was just wondering if anybody that was in Vietnam. I just gotten married, all that stuff, you know. <laughs> I, I, uh, I must be a little younger than you. I was the last draft lottery, June oh. point of 1972. Nixon made an all volunteer army, and the lottery that was printed that week <laughs> out. And yeah. I was number 64. So you know where that meant if it was the week before where I'd be going. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a rice patty. Well, you were lucky. Oh, no, you were no, lucky. No, you would have been laying carpet. You, you dodged a bullet on that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I wasn't mature enough when I was that age to uh, to, to go do that. I, I don't think I was. Uh, uh, I I don't think I could have handled it. Well, on the good side of what's happening in, in Afghanistan, they got 11,000 people out in a 24 hour period yesterday. Wow. Uh, and they're getting a lot of people out there as a plane every 45 minutes. Yeah. And, there's and they've, had, they've had three babies that, that have uh, been delivered on some of those flights. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and an Air Force base, Ram, Ram, uh, the German Air Ramstein. Force base. Ramstein. Ramstein. Yeah. That's, that's American soil, right? If it's right. yeah, it is. Yep. So that baby is an American citizen. Huh. Ah. Well, well, wait a minute. Suppose they were born on the airplane while it was flying. It was on. Flight. No, it was on. It was on the tarmac. It was on the tarmac. So he's yeah. the kid is an automatic citizen. And, um, uh, McCain was born in a uh, on a base in. He was Panama. born in Panama. Panama Canal Zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now, yeah, but Panama Canal is part of the United States, right? It was the Canal right. Zone was part of the United States, right? And and any any military base is also the United States. So. Panama Canal is part of Panama. Panama, Panama <laughs> right? Yeah, it's not the United States. Anymore. It used to be the Panama Canal Zone, is what it was right. called, you know. And then at a certain point, we gave it back. You mean Carter did? Those with malaria. Well, they had, we had to give it back. It was it was uh, the lease was up on the land, ninety nine year lease. Yeah, oh. Alex never gave your place back when it when the lease was up. Oh, <laughs> it's a sore good. subject. Don't get into that one. But let, better yet, let's find out. Did you uh, get the award yet for the uh, Brady? I guess you don't pay attention. Good no. I bet Tony knows whether I did. Or yeah, I, did. I can't get over this. I was shocked when you put that. I was like, "What? Did you get the award or not?" Sal and Jesse didn't even get. It. I don't even know who got it. This is ridiculous. The uh, uh, the two guys in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I looked them up, Alex. They got a podcast. Let them finish. Okay. Oh, so what if they got a podcast? Everybody's got a podcast. I know, but that's not even radio. You think like come no, on? No, no, no. They've got a radio show oh, too. They got a radio show? Oh. Yeah, but nobody's ever heard of them. Oh, okay. you know, um, I, you know, I could feel bad about it, but because it was them, I figure the whole thing's a fix. Right? Okay. Yeah, come on. You know, I mean, you appara- a, apparently, you know, it's unfair to put people up who don't have a radio program. And are not on the air somewhere against people who are because those people who are can get tens of thousands of people to write it write you in and supposedly according to my friend walter sabo the committee pays attention to that even though it's only 1 25th of the vote so they just got a lot of their people to 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 uh, uh vote for them but it, you know it why even do it okay the way they're doing it they also had a list there was a secondary list of people who are uh, dead who they added to the legends category and finally barry gray got into the hall of fame and allison Steele and a couple of people like that but now what this means is in order for me to actually get into the hall of fame i probably have to die and I don't like that idea. I'd like to enjoy this while I'm still alive. Hey, okay. Larry Elder didn't win. No. All right. So you should. Well, no, I would have really been pissed if Larry Elder won. I I wanted, if it wasn't me, I wanted Sally Jesse to win. Ooh, In fact, there was a kind of part of me that wanted Sally to win more than me, just because she's like 76, 77 years old. And uh, 86, 86, 87 years old. Hmm. And she could, you know, she. it would be nice if she went out like this, you know? Uh, uh, I, I think that what I've done for this industry and the changes I've created, you know, I, I'll say this in all honesty, if it weren't for me, there might not have ever been a Howard Stern, okay? Because H- Howard, listen to me when he was growing up and and he took advantage of of the things that i was already doing uh you know i mean i influenced this business 
uh, incredibly. And yet, that doesn't seem to matter because it's these two guys, nobody, I mean, I know people who live near Philadelphia never heard of these guys. And a couple, a couple of people wrote and said, yeah, I've listened to them. They're terrible. You know. Can I say something else? Yeah. Alex? You want to live? No. I was, I mean, of course, I was voting for you, and I voted for Chris Mad Dog Russo because he used to be on Mike and the Mad Dog. Yeah. Now, Francesa got in the Hall of Fame, Mike Francesa. Yeah. He got in. Now, Mad Dog was up like you, and he didn't even get in. How could he not get in when he was half of the... To of the, the only guy that got... The, the, only really? guy that, the only guy that won that I agree with is this guy out of Rochester, uh, Brother, brother, brother Weeze. Yeah. Is he any good? I don't know whether he's any good or not, but he's been around for years, you know? And he's mm -hmm. he's been in a small market, basically. And, mm -hmm. and uh, I was very happy to see that he won. But... Uh, for instance, um, uh, uh, Steve, Steve Van Zant has a show called Little Stevie's Something mm -hmm. Garage. I can't remember what it is. He's been doing it for years. Did it on Sirius XM and has been just doing it in syndication for years. And it's a good little show. He should have gotten it. Yeah, he you has know? a good show. He should have gotten it and he didn't get it. You know, nobody who should have gotten it got it. You know. Uh, so, I mean, you really got a question. Uh, finally, they did. I said, you know, that Barry Gray had never made it to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And they finally, this time, they did a Legends. But you got to be dead for that. See, that's not that's See, true. That's wrong. It's wrong. It's all wrong. I mean, do we say that, hey, in order to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, you have to be dead? Well, in that case, you know, they would have never had people in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because how old is Rock and Roll? You know, but given that a lot of them did drugs, you finally would have had enough to put in there. Uh, but I mean, uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame doesn't sit there and go, "Oh, you know, we're we're going to have a bunch of we're going to name a bunch of dead people as well, a whole category of dead people." I mean, it's just wrong. You know, it's wrong for the dead people. You should have done it while they were alive yeah. and they could appreciate it and feel good about the recognition they got. You know. Guys, were uh, using payola. What? I don't know how they want those. Well, yeah. Alan Freed's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Oh, he, yeah. he what payola was. Uh, they just, they just, I think they just put in Tom Donahue. Tom Donahue was chased out of Philadelphia for payola. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't matter either. They, they, they if, if, uh, Tom Donahue should have been in years ago. Barry Gray died what, twenty-five years ago, something yeah. like that, maybe more. Come on, he yeah, should have been in a long to... time ago. I mean, it's, it's shameful. Ago. It's the whole process is shameful. Yes. How, uh, often, how often do they nominate people? Once every year. Once a year? Once a year. And I can but I'll nominate... vote for you next year 12 times again. Well, if they, they nominate me, but after what I've been saying about them, I probably won't get nominated. And I don't give a shit. The reason you didn't win is because they never heard what you said about them. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, uh, you know, but the thing is that that also the thing that bothers me a bit is that I looked at the people who were like in the legends, as an mm -hmm. example, and they were all people from major markets. You know, and there were a lot of these small market radio stations that had people who were very important to those markets. And they didn't make it. You know, Barry Gray was never syndicated. Who? Uh, Barry Gray wasn't syndicated. No, Barry Gray was never syndicated. No. Mark, New York, and just like you were in New York. Well, well I was never syndicated. I was Not never national. Hmm? As, a, as a legend, they uh, they weren't syndicated. And they were just in one market, Barry Gray, New York. Yeah, Allison Steele. Yeah, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, I mean, it's nice. I'm glad they got recognition. Frankie Crocker's on there, guy I work for, but with, but Frankie's been dead again for 20 years. Frankie should have been in the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago, many, many I, years ago. I saw Frankie Crocker the day I, I was at WMCA, mm -hmm. and uh, he was walking down the hallway. He had a fur coat that went all the way down, mm -hmm. like a mink, a mink coat. It yeah. went all the way. Yeah, yeah, he was pimped up a lot. Really? Yeah, uh, uh, but he and I had the same birthday. He's long dead, you know. Uh, so I mean, I guess I have to die in order to make the Hall of Fame. And I'm going to write him a letter before I die. If you want to put me in the Hall of Fame, don't. 
You know what you should do, yeah. Alex? I thought of something. You should video you should videotape yourself as an acceptance speech and give it to Shecky just in case you ever get announced <laughs> and then let him play it for him. Yeah, but so I mean, really uh, I just I don't know. I just I just find the whole process it was like a contest, and I didn't I I, I don't like a contest where art is concerned. Although and, calling radio an art is, a, is stretching it a bit, but you know. But you're entertaining now. Come on, you should do that videotape yourself, just in case you do win. Leave it on archive and give it to them. You know, but and your obituary, and maybe they'll put you in the legends one next year. Yeah, well, I, I'm. I was thinking of actually killing Alex Bennett <laughs> and, and, and having him die. Already. Having Alex Bennett die. Think and see what happens. Out. You know, you never know. Anytime you go to oh, search yeah. Google. Uh, it'll say such and such obituary, and even though the guy's not dead. You know, you could be looking for uh, Tony Magno. Well, they have, and, they have this whole list of people that have been dead so long, yeah. okay, that uh, I don't think anybody who would look at that list, any modern kid who would look at that list, would even know who any of those people were. I'd have to Google it and look for them. You know? So, I mean, it, I just, I just, uh, it. I don't know. It, I thought it, for sure you were going to get in. I was. I was. Oh, no, I, was I didn't. I didn't. Them. I thought it would be Sally. To tell you the truth, but you know what I did? I assumed this was all legit. Okay, and that it that it wasn't it, it that there was some sensibility in it all, and there isn't because Sally should. It, it, let's say there were twenty four votes that didn't that the the, 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 the uh, voting by people by the public mm -hmm. only amounted to one twenty fifth of the vote. Well, if that were true and didn't affect the other 24 parts of the vote, then probably these guys wouldn't have won. But, I mean, I can't see where these people, uh, you know, uh, voted for, uh, for, for these guys. I don't know why. I'll tell you one reason why. One of the guys, is, is for, they're from Beasley Broadcasting, and uh, one of the guys, at least, is with who's on the nominating committee is with Beasley Broadcasting, mm -hmm. so that may have been one of the reasons. Also, but to to put up people who no longer have programs against two people who still have programs is grossly unfair. It's just grossly unfair, and and uh, I so I think where I made my mistake is I gave this this whole process and this whole thing a certain honorable place and it doesn't deserve it it's just nothing but a yearly hustle for whoever holds the goddamn thing you know and and i shouldn't have given it that much credit yeah mm -hmm. and uh i i just i just i i it, it, howard was nominated a few years back and there's a whole thing on youtube where howard goes to them i don't even want to be nominated screw you you should have nominated me years ago they finally let him in, you know, because how can you deny Howard Stern? Um, he hated the Radio Hall of Fame. I heard and he hated like, the Radio Hall of Fame. I don't think he even. Well, he said up. it like you said, Alex. He said it just doesn't make any sense. It, 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 those guys. Yeah. Uh, the, here, that, hold, hold the picture. Who? Pull it closer. Anybody? Anybody ever? I mean, anybody I don't know, know who these guys I mean, are? I had to Google them. I didn't even know who the one looks was. like. Phil, the yeah, short I one. <laughs> Phil's got a gig, side second gig. And yeah, the other oh, one looks are, like Tony. Are they on the front page of the Philadelphia Inquirer? Uh, I I don't know if this is the front page. It just is uh, the Inquirer's uh, posted story saying that uh, uh, they joined uh, MMR in 2005. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I guess they've been around for a while. Uh, oh, they've been around for a while, but, you know, I mean, how good are they? They're just a hack morning team. That's all they are. Now they. they this is what this is what I'm told, at least by people who have heard them. I mean, uh, I, I don't even. I don't understand it. Really. Yeah, yeah. So, I never. I never heard them. Uh, I had no idea who they were. Yeah. No, nobody. No, it's funny that even people well, who live in Philadelphia have never heard of them. Well, we all we all wanted you to win. Well, I know that, but I I honestly believe that the way the whole thing is structured, there was no way I was going to win, 
and that I put what, too much credence into this thing, thinking I even had a possibility of winning, which I didn't. I never did. Not the way it's structured. And, you know, uh, if these people actually voted for these guys based on anything else but, oh, hey, look at how much people voted for them or whatever, then they have no sense of radio or broadcasting or the history of broadcasting. You know? That's They're never going to get an Emmy, and you got two. I got two That's Emmys, problem, yeah. Man. But yeah, Cuomo had one, and they took it away him. from him. I, right. And then they said he left his dog. He gave the dog away, I heard now. Who? Cuomo? Cuomo, they said he left the dog at the... He gave it to somebody, one of his uh, people who worked for him, and now he's saying, no, I didn't leave it with him. He was only watching him for me. His dog captain, they said he gave it away. Well, I don't think he would give his dog away. I hope not. Now that they say he's, I uh, only did it for a few no, days. No, but you know what bothers me? Or I, I said earlier, the thing that bothers me about the Emmys, taking away his Emmy, uh, is that he has not been found guilty of anything. I mean, to take his award, that's hacky. Isn't well, it? They, they, why do you take it away? They gave him the award because of the work he did with appearing on television every day and t calming the public down and giving them the facts about COVID and what should be done and tamping yeah, down, yeah. The, the, uh, tamping down the, the uh, uh, problems with it. And that was a wonderful thing he did. And he deserved to get an Emmy. And it's an honorable Emmy. It's an yeah, he... honorary Emmy. Uh, but he, he deserved it. He deserved to get it. The, anything he's been accused of not convicted of, not even proven in a court of law that he did, it changes the value that he had using his television pulpit to help save lives. So how you then suddenly say, well, because he patted a woman on the ass, we're going to take it away. I mean, it this is like just insane. It, it's just yeah, insane. Right. He did this to the woman. You know, but he didn't do that on TV. It wasn't like he unbuttoned his shirt while he, he was didn't giving go in speech. there. And, he didn't go <laughs> in there and, and it was not. He didn't go in there and motorboat her. Okay, you I'm know. With my mother, and she used to love watching him at twelve o'clock or one. Yeah, we got lunch uh, watching. Listen, we He's watched it every day. day. Yeah, we watched it every day because it calmed us down. We knew this. The captain was at the helm of the ship. You know. Uh, and and uh, it, it, he was good enough to get the honorary award before. How does this change any of that? I don't. I don't. I don't understand. You know, how we're, we're a very unforgiving uh, country. The, the say, governor yeah. was not accused. Was he was only accused. He was never found guilty of anything. Alex, you think they'll strip his pension next? Is that the next step? No, they, they can't do that. Pension? They can't do that. And by the way, because it looks like they're not going to impeach him, you know what he could do? He, he could run. He could run for governor next year. I don't want him to run just to see the hoop like all crazy. <laughs> you know, he could run for Schumer's seat. He could run for, uh, what's her name, seat? Uh, that cunt. Uh, oh, Gillibrand. Uh, Gillibrand. Gillibrand. Jesus, what a piece of work she is. Well, but the she... legislature could technically, they could yeah. pass a law taking away his pension, but then his uh, the current governor could veto it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to do that. You know, after all, doesn't he deserve a pension? He did the job. Right. You know, he showed up for work every day. Give him the goddamn pension. Uh, but I mean, this idea that that well, we're we're going to just you know say to hell with it. We're not going to uh, uh, we're not, we're not going to uh, 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 give him the uh, tip. We're going to take away, strip him of his Emmy. Without but the only reason is is that he was accused of something. None of this was proven. Did you buy his book? No. Uh, you know, uh, he got paid $4 million for that really? book. Really? For the book? Mm-hmm. Yeah, book deal, $4 million up front. Uh, so I don't think we're going to have to have any... Uh, um, Pity party. To make sure... Yeah, right. He yeah. wouldn't have to worry about his next square meal is coming from. 
Yeah. Well, one of the things they were charging, 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 Arjun, 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 and said you're in a loop, but uh, no, but I, 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 you know, I've never had that happen before. No. That was I, fun, though. Yeah, I, I, not fun. Yeah, I wonder uh, if it got recorded. Didn't expect that from Skype being a Microsoft product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, 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 yeah, but if, if this is yeah, this is not a Microsoft product. It should work. No. No, that's right. That was my point. I, I really, I really enjoyed using Skype tonight uh, today because I was doing it with uh, Larry Bubbles Brown. And, really? Yes, and uh, it was uh, it was Larry Bubbles Brown, and uh, he, he, all of a sudden I lost him. Skype went I was dead on me. Listening to the listening to the show, and I heard some house music. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you heard house? What? what? What was that? That's, you. that's that's what you sounded like. That's what you sounded oh, like. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, yeah. I didn't hear that. How long, how long was that going on? About 10, 10 15 10. seconds. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, I was ready to start taking some ecstasy. Well, that shouldn't, really. that shouldn't, 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 it shouldn't have happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, we lost yeah, by Jeff. the way, guess who was over here uh, yesterday? Spent a couple Jackie. of hours with her. Uh, Lori no, Thompson. Lori Thompson. <laughs> Lori right. Thompson. You know because you watched the show yesterday. I yeah. was on the show yesterday. You were yesterday. on the show yesterday. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it was Lori Thompson was with me here. She's my newswoman in San Francisco. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, it's nice to see her. You know? Yeah, I'll have to go back and watch tomorrow's show. And she's she's getting uh, uh, she's getting married wow. for the at sixty one first time in her life. My line to her was, uh, "Don't you think you're a little young to be getting married for the first time?" Yeah. So. Nobody laughs at that joke. I think it's a very funny joke. I've heard it like four times. So. Yeah, I know you've heard it four times in the past two <laughs> days. So anyway, so. Uh, um, well, look at that. We 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 got Brian. Uh, we got everybody back out of the out of the loop, and we yeah. got Brian too. Yeah, we got Brian as a bonus. As a bonus. Yeah. 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 Oh man, Phil's here. Oh man. Yeah. What, what do you mean? Oh, man, is it, what, he, what, he, loves to, he loves to talk, and nobody now, hears Phil, him. Phil Phil's been very good lately. He he needed, he, he needed another body. I, yeah. I just had to swear. <laughs> He's yeah. opening a new a new uh, a new chain of bookstores too, as you can see from yeah. the background. Well, that's right. the City Lights Bookstore, which is that's a fam famous, very famous bookstore. That's yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, Lawrence yeah. from Getty. Yeah. I hear they won't be selling uh, Trump's book. Oh, uh, they won't. Uh, but then I did a, a reflection of uh, what was in the window uh, was is North Beach. So when you look at the buildings, that's the reflection that I uh, took in the window. That's and, a re actual reflection. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so I, I all know. that with your iPhone. Well, those are those are, I believe, about nineteen late nineteen forty San What's Francisco that? buildings. The ones in the back there. Oh, you see the condor? I think that's the condor. No, the Roaring Twenties sign. No. Uh, no. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, uh, above I the. Don't see it. Well, that's that's the, the roaring roaring twenties. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's there anymore, are they? 
eye. You see the hungry eye uh, just to the. Yeah. To, to, oh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But that wasn't the original hungry mm -hmm. eye. Well, the original mm -hmm. hungry eye was on Col Columbus? Yeah, it was down the street. Yeah. Just down the street from, from the City Lights bookstore. <clears throat> yeah. 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 And uh, but if if you look there, that's Broadway, San Francisco, and uh, City Lights was on Columbus. Yeah. So you got the uh, you got the reflection in the window. Yeah, it's a nice picture, Phil. It's a really nice San Francisco picture. Yeah. All uh, that with an iPhone. Yeah. No, it wasn't an iPhone. <laughs> but, no. no. But you don't. You could shoot that just as well with an iPhone today. Today, probably. You know. Here comes oh. Kevin. I don't know why these people are all of a sudden now. Kevin's joining in at the last minute. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm okay. I'm surviving. You know. I was just watching you talk about San. I was there Sunday. Oh, uh, where in San Francisco? Yeah, we spent the day up there. It was pretty fun. I love how you say up there because I realize you're all the way down there. Yeah. You know. and it's up. Yep, and it's up. It's, it's yep. definitely up. It's up. No, we spent. Uh, we went to that Van Gogh thing. So. Oh yeah, tell me how you how you liked it. Actually, I liked it. I thought it was pretty cool. The, yeah. Did they have all the yeah, cutouts? I went in there with low expectations, and. Uh, yeah. Well, I actually sat through it two and a half times. I I think I may have lowered your expectations a little bit of it, but what? Yeah, I think it was a different one than what you told me about with the goggle thing because they didn't offer that one. They didn't offer that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get that either. I got I I went to the bad exhibit. The better exhibit had the goggles. In fact, I think we're going to this other one again. So, oh, okay, because yeah. this one didn't even offer the the goggles or. Is anything. this the moving one that you just stay in one place and it moves past you? Yeah, it it's just like you sit in the room and it right. it projects it you I know kitty corner. That. They split it up in kitty corner and you just. It just Hang keeps moving. If you, if you were on drugs, it'd be really fun. But can you imagine uh, Van Gogh meet, meets Banksy, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they put Shredder. Well, well they are. We doing... went down to. Uh, we went, you know, went down Columbus, and I, my daughter wanted to see the city, so I took her on the, uh, the same tour I used to take my Chinese tourists over on, when they came over here from Asia. I'd, my company, and I'd take them all through the city and take them all those places so I did one for her and we took her up to Coit Tower and down through the Fisherman's Wharf and everything but you know Fisherman's Wharf was sad yeah. it was really sad down there where just yesterday you mean on Sunday yeah yeah why sad it, in what way it's it, it was just that you know it, it was it was boarded up it looked like a hurricane went through there mm. Aliotos, Scomas the Grotto all those places were all boarded up. Why? Because of COVID? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're all shut down. Yeah. All right. You, got, you know the, the old crab row where they always steaming the crabs and everything else? There was only like two or three of them open. Wow. Yeah. And everybody was clamoring to get into those. Wow. Because uh, I am one of my one of my good friends in San Francisco was Angela Aliotto. Uh-huh. Who's whose family owns Aliotos and I, yeah. I went into Aliotos one day and I had dinner there something to eat there and it was terrible it was just terrible oh, yeah. it was horrible I mean some of those restaurants weren't great they were just, just landmarks it was horrible and the next time I saw her on the show I said I went to your family's restaurant she said yeah I said it was terrible yeah and, and we, uh, you know they're we, landmarks yeah that's what and they some are some of those places are there since 31 Fisherman's Grotto number 9 has been there as long as I've been alive yeah I remember as a there. kid. I mean, we used wow, to go fishing. Long? Huh? I said, wow, that long? You got to have crab when you go there. You know, yeah. I went for the crab Louis salad, and, uh, you know, it was always good. There was plenty of. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, plenty of. Yeah. Plenty. We ended up eating at uh, Chipino's, which, you know, I've always liked. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was, you know, and, and I'll tell you what. You have to have your card, you have to have your ID, mm -hmm. and you have to have your mask. You don't even go into San Francisco without any of that stuff. Right. Unless you vote. You vote, you don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just stick you on a boat and send you back. But the thing is, the thing is that when, here's what my parents did. And this was a tradition with us. They would stop by Fisherman's Wharf. They would pick up two cracked crabs. Yep. Okay some sourdough french bread yep 
and the ju- and a jug of red wine. As no we, chowder. We used to call uh-huh. it no, no, no. We used to call it Dago Red, and then my parents <laughs> would bring it home, and that was dinner, you know. And it was that's what I do in Monterey all the time. And it was cheap as hell in those days. I mean, today you buy a crab and it costs a fortune. But in those oh, yeah. days, you buy two crabs, you're walking away having spent a buck and a half or something. And, and the sourdough French you bread. You got your crabs in San Francisco. No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I mean, didn't. but that was a, that was that's my what can I call it? that's my comfort food because I remember that as a kid. Oh know? yeah. Uh, we do it every Christmas. I yes. took Alan to this place called Ray's Crab Shack in uh, is it Union City or Newark? Newark. Uh, uh, they, it's this place. They take the full crab uh, and they boil it in these in this, this delicious sauce. And then they crack it and they clean it. And then they leave it in the bag. And it comes out. It is just delicious. I guess I wasn't there that time. We had to crack and clean our own. Oh, well, uh, it's it's well, my, my when my parents used to do this. We, you know, you were it talking about great, you, you, you do it this like good, once good a crap. year, right, uh, Kevin? And my parents, we used to do it like twice a month. I mean, that's how often it, that was dinner. Oh, hey, yeah. I, why don't we why don't we pass by the wharf and grab some cra- crab? You know, and yeah, you only buy crab with the uh, in the month with an R. Yes, right. Yeah. You know the reason <laughs> for that. Yeah, because of the uh, the bacteria or the algae or the no, bacteria, or whatever no, it is. No, it had nothing yeah. to do with that. It had to do with spacing it out so that the crabs, they'd have enough crab to grow because they'd go in and catch everything. Yeah, it was and, the season, and yeah. If, and if they did it every single month, there would be, they deplete the crab population. Yeah. So I this was a, it was a toxin. No, uh, no, no. Like no, it was meant to maintain the the density of the of the crab population now it's now it's uh they delay it because of the um what is it because of the mm-hmm. the whaling the whale travel and yeah. the um are the, the, the yeah. nets and whatnot now they delay it because of that are the are the seals still hanging out of fisherman's wharf i didn't see one. Oh, because really? they, they used to just hang out oh. there on the on the they're out on there the on those they're out there on the go out there and they used yeah. to be it, it, they're getting getting in fights with each other over the women you know i mean it was really it was it was hey, fun, it was fun to watch actually alex they're closing the great highway the cars uh and, yeah they had it closed at uh lincoln yeah. wait a minute they closed the great highway what in california yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah they closed it at lincoln down to slope it, right. well, now wait a minute. Where's the Great Highway? Is that the one that goes along the shoreline? Where the cliff yeah. house. Oh, okay. That's Highway One. Yeah, yeah. The Highway, and they, it's closed. Uh, and uh, they're talking about closing it permanently, uh, as as well as um, uh, the cliff house. Uh, well, the, cliff lost ha- their- the cliff house is over. They resigned. Somebody resigned and bought it. Bought the okay. lease. Oh, really? Yeah. They're, Good. But they're just. They're closing it to foot. They're closing it to driving traffic, right? There's still bicycles and everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, we went there yesterday or Sunday. It was closed from Lincoln down to Sloat, where the zoo is, wow. for walking. Wow. Yeah, they, they do a cars and coffee. They're really nice there. Yeah. Around the water. But it was open from Lincoln up to the Cliff House. Well, there's a theme song, by the way, folks. Uh, already? Yeah, yeah, already. Uh, uh, thank you, Phil, for sticking around tonight. He's you've been a good boy. Been a good boy. Uh, Alan, thank you so much. By the way, also thank you the other day for calling the show. Vernon, Vernon, we lost his picture just now. But Vernon, N4UL, thank you. Oh, there he is. Bye-bye, Vernon. Seven thank three. You. Thank mm-hmm. you, Tony, for being here. Uh, Mr. Neary, Brian Neary, thank you. Thank you to Jeff Stein, and thank you... Uh, to uh, Kevin and to guys like Kevin who voted for me at least uh, eight times for the uh, Hall of Fame. It didn't well, work. It didn't. Should. It didn't work. But you know, what the hell? Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our. That's our uh, guys for tonight. Okay, uh, that's the uh, that's the citizen panel. 
Uh, there will be no intersection next because Jack is taking the night off. Uh, he spent the night in the hospital. He'll explain that all to you tomorrow. It's no big deal, but he needs uh, a little bit of rest uh, before he can come and do a show. So we'll play a rerun of him right after we're through here. In the meantime, I just want to say to all of you, uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, first, there's a sports show at 830 and then we call the arena with the franchise MC. And then we'll be here at 1030. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, uh, wear a mask. And if you don't wear a mask, go get vaccinated, okay? Go do it. Bye. Make you feel good.